Sharon Osborne from The Talk has made quite the stink over the last few days because of an interaction that she had with one of her co-hosts, Cheryl Underwood. She did not like the idea of her possibly being considered racist because of her affiliation with Pierce Morgan. Now, mind you, no one directly called her racist, but she took quite the offense to that. I want us to take a look at the first clip. I am. I, I feel even mm-hmm. like uh, I'm about to be put in the electric chair because I have a friend who many people think is a racist, so that makes me a racist. And for me, at 68 years of age, to have to turn around and say, I ain't racist. Right. What's well, it got to do with me? I'm well, okay, well, how can I be racist about anybody? How can I be racist about anybody or anything in my life? How can I? Well, 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 I well tell what? You, we will be right well, back. What? We have more topics, so don't go away. And I think we don't should go. stop this. Okay, so now that that was just the first part of the exchange. And for a little bit more context, this is obviously in response to Pierce Morgan and everything that's happening with Meghan Markle and the royal family. And when the conversation came up, Sharon Osbourne took it extremely personally. But it was the next portion of the segment that really caused the ruckus online. Let's take a look at it. I will From ask you again, Cheryl. Yes. I've been asking you during the break. Right. I'm asking you again. And don't try and cry, because if anyone should be crying, it should be me. This is the situation. Yes. You tell me where you have heard him say, educate me. Tell me when you have heard him say racist things. It educate me, tell me. It, it is not the exact words of racism. It's the implication and the reaction to it. To not want to address that because she is a black woman and to try to dismiss it or to make it seem less than what it is. That's what makes it racist. But, but right now, I'm talking to a woman who I believe is my friend. And I don't want anybody here to, to watch this and say that we're attacking you for being racist. And, <laughs> and, and, that, and, and for that, <laughs> If I articulated anything. I think it's anything, too late. I think that okay. seed's already sown. But that, that is why I'm <laughs> saying for me, I'm saying for me, for me. I thought I was asking a question about the perception for other people. That's why I prefaced it with, I've never heard you utter anything oh, racist, please. but I have but I have felt that Pierce was racist in his stance against Meghan Markle. And the last time he was on this show, I said as much. Now, Jake and Morgan, um, I, I'm going to yield the floor to you. Um, but this, looking at Cheryl Underwood, and how she had to very carefully pick every word and compartmentalize all of the rage that I'm sure she felt for fear of being labeled as an angry black woman in response to Sharon Osborne making herself the victim on behalf of Pierce Morgan. I'll have plenty more to say about that, but Jake, what do you, what do you think about that clip? So I think that there's a, this giant disconnect in the country that we can't ever seem to get past. So. I think that a lot of white folks, and uh, and and apparently not just this country, because it affects the UK, and and, <laughs> and by the way, a, most of the old world, um, it for white folks, they feel like they're being personally uh, attacked and insulted, etc. When anyone even talks about race, yeah. just the beginning of a discussion of race, and they think, oh, are you calling me racist? Oh, that's it. I can't believe you 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 think that uh, I'm a bad person, right? The second disconnect is they think racist is someone who just goes up to black people and attacks them, right? Right. That, no, guys, that for white folks, no, that ain't it, okay? So like I asked this question the other day online and literally no one could come up with an example. Is there anything where the right wing has said, yes, that actually is racist? <laughs> Like I've never seen it, literally never in covering news for 25 years uh, where the right wing goes, oh yeah, that's also racist. Now they're saying the George Floyd thing also not not only not racist, not bad. That George Floyd had it coming, that George Floyd had once taken drugs in his life. And then so he should have been 
uh, you know, his neck should have been knelt on for uh, nine minutes, etc. The people say the Confederacy isn't racist. The whole point of the Confederacy was to maintain slavery, the ownership of black people. If that's not racist, what what is your definition of racism, right? And that's where the disconnect is, because I think white people think it only means punching black people in the face and saying outwardly all the time that they are inferior. Thinking it, by the way, they don't think is racist. Mm -hmm. They think saying it might be racist depending on how often you say it, etc. right? Whereas the rest of us, Having dealt with the institutional disadvantages and uh, and and the that history of discrimination raining down on us and affecting our lives so significantly at, at varying degrees, I as a Muslim in America, you know, it's not a hunky dory situation, but it's a lot less discrimination than than black people in America. That's just reality. That's my experience, right? And so we felt it. And so we're like, how could they not see it? Isn't that the craziest thing you've ever seen that they can't see the most obvious thing? Because we've lived it. And so I think that's where the disconnect is. Yeah. Morgan, what's your take? Yeah, no, I really agree with that. I mean, they, they're not seeing it because that is the definition of the privilege in a lot of ways, right? It's like you don't have to see it. And so I think, you know, just getting back to one thing Ben was saying, we've all been there where Cheryl was and having to like exercise that restraint. Also an additional burden that a lot of white folks do not have to experience. But yeah, I think it's been interesting in the whole aftermath of the Harry Meghan interview too. How little focus there is on like some really critical things that matter for a lot more people than just Harry or Meghan, right? The fact that we had Piers Morgan who was normalizing going after a black woman with a huge platform in this culture and dynamic right now that can be fueled by social media. That has a huge impact on regular people who are living their lives too, in addition to the impacts on her. Um, you know, that's a that's a problem. And then also, you know, the Sharon saying she wants to learn, but <laughs> how about learn and listen to some of the other black folks in England that are like, hey, by the way, this is our reality, right? You know, and like this isn't the most uh, accepting culture in all the ways. And people who are on the show with peers that are like experiencing discrimination in their own families. So that that's disappointing because you know you like it's or disingenuous, I should say. You know, you yeah. say you want to be educated, but people are trying to educate you and you right. just don't want to listen, and that's because you don't have to. And 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 the thing, like, thank you for pointing that out because Cheryl Underwood was literally trying to educate her in that moment. You know, if it was me, I would say go to Google and educate yourself. But <laughs> right. Cheryl was literally trying to educate her, but she was rejecting it, and and she rejected it with this um, with this condescension and just complete dismissal of Cheryl's humanity as well as what she was feeling, and and denying her even her tears. She was like, oh, don't even try to cry. While she was right. simultaneously using her white tears as a shield, she was trying to take down Cheryl Underwood's ability to be human in that moment. And so I guess after you know getting thrashed on social media per usual, she had a second you know thought about it and she put out a statement and this is what she said. She said, after some reflection, this is Sharon Osborne speaking. After some reflection, after sitting with your comments and sitting with my heart, I would like to address the discussion on the talk this past Wednesday. I have always been embraced with so much love and support from the black community. And I have deep respect and love for the black community to anyone of color that I offended and or to anyone that feels confused or let down by what I said, I am truly sorry. I wanna read this next part, she said, I panicked. I felt blindsided, I got defensive and allowed my fear and horror of being accused of being racist take over. There are very few things that hurt my heart more than racism. So to feel associated with it, with that spun me fast. I'm not perfect and I'm still learning like the rest of us and will continue to learn and listen and do better. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a great statement, uh, Pierce Morgan chimed in because this was all centered around him and he needed to make it even more about him. And this is what he said. He said, Sharon's been shamed and bullied into apologizing for defending me against colleagues accusing me of racism because I don't believe Meghan Merkel's BS. This is where we've reached. I demand an apology from those at the talk CBS bullies for their disgraceful slurs against me. Um, so this is, this is obviously, um, Par for the course for Pierce Morgan, and I'm sure it does have a lot to do with racism because it is Pierce Morgan, but it's also drenched in his usual misogyny and you know some of his jealousy with the stories that he's told himself. But nevertheless, he's inserted himself personally back into this, despite the fact that Sharon Osbourne herself is backing up from it. Jank. Yeah. So did did 
Pierce Morgan changed his Twitter picture to include a black person in it. <laughs> that is unreal, man. <laughs> oh, you are so obvious, dude. <laughs> That's just the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's just note that for the record and move on. <laughs> um, so, um, look, guys, the, the original controversy is Meghan Markle says somebody in the royal family was concerned about uh, the skin color of the, their baby. Um, to me, I find that to be the single most believable story I have ever heard in my life. And not just because I've uh, seen racism in America, but because I'm also from the old world. Where in the old world, that is rampant. The talk of skin color, when you go to uh, name a country, Asian countries, India, Turkey, you, yeah, Name it, it doesn't matter if it's Russia or Mozambique, okay? Yeah. Skin color and the shade of the color, even if you're black or even if you're brown, these are giant topics of conversation. And and yes, a lot of people think that it matters and it's heartbreaking, right? Yeah. But to say that you are in disbelief that anybody would have that conversation, <laughs> no, that's crazy. I mean, that shows you that you have no empathy at all. That when black and brown people say that's a conversation we've heard a thousand times in our lives. And you say, no, I think you're all liars. <laughs> and that it's outrageous and nobody would ever have that conversation. No, that you lose all credibility. And that's when people think, oh, this guy's not having an honest conversation. This guy's just trying to cover up obvious racism that clearly exists. And that's what we think of you, Piers. So. And that's why, so you can get your feelings all hurt. And the guy loves controversy. And he walked off that set as if he was like so brokenhearted over it. It was that was his way of like play acting to white folks in the UK. Like, oh my God, I'm standing up for all right. of you by crying harder than anyone else, and I'm willing to sacrifice myself. And then like a day later, he's like, oh, by the way, I'm opening up a right wing competitor to the show that I was on because I'm a dirtbag, and I was always planning to dirt to do this, and it was always a business tactic and had nothing to do with my actual emotions on the day. So all that stuff, there's rumors of that at least. But one last thing about empathy. Look, I'm in an interesting situation because I'm Turkish. So Turks are massively discriminated against in Germany, for example, okay? On the other hand, Turks do discrimination within Turkey where they're the majority. So it's a really interesting, unique perspective. So I grew up with Turkish propaganda. So I believe some things about other groups that weren't true. So that isn't the problem, guys. Like for white folks and brown folks and anyone else that feels, or Asians, etc., that feels put upon anytime somebody uses the word racism. Just, I love you, brothers. Just calm down for a second, okay? And I know that it could be hurtful. I've been falsely attacked for charges of racism, absurd attacks, including all oh, your race against whites. <laughs> okay, I know, I know, right? Okay, so same on same on you. <laughs> yeah. So, but what we're asking you to do is instead of being like massively defensive, just think it through. Like, oh, what is the other side saying? Let me listen. Let me have a little bit of empathy. Oh, all these folks, billions of folks are telling me that skin color has affected them a lot in their life, and that they've been either oppressed by it. Maybe slightly hurt is sometimes and sometimes massively hurt. Maybe I should listen to that and see if they're not all liars. Like it's not a high bar. It's really actually kind of a low bar if you think about it. Yeah, and and it is it is interesting because I think especially in a lot of other countries, particularly European countries, there's this tendency to want to dismiss it like, oh, race, that's like a U.S. issue that you know we don't have that. Like France is going through this referendum referendum on like their whole way of being and running their culture that's like free of any acknowledgement of race and it's ridiculous and it's it all works fine unless you're a person of color, right? And then you have like real experiences of being discriminated against and you can't even really talk about it. So um yeah, I think we're seeing, you know, in a global way too, this reckoning of like what the different experiences have been and folks are being honest. So it's good, but yeah, it takes a little bit of empathy and a lot less ego to actually, <laughs> you know, embrace that honesty. <laughs> a lot less ego is a, is probably the biggest hurdle to overcome when we're talking about somebody like Pierce Morgan, but but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get 
playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.